I'm gonna go ahead and get us rocking and rolling. First off, remember, the situation in the world today is incredibly fluid, meaning that anything we talk about here, any changes that are happening on a state-by-state -state basis are happening state-by-state, -state, city by city, zip code by zip code, county by county. So make sure that you're checking with your state dealers association to find out what you can do in your state today. Um, I wanna introduce our guests and I wanna give a huge shout out. First off, when we were talking about uh, at AutoFi, putting together this webinar series, one of the key components that was really important to all of us was talking about really the, the marketing piece. You know, at AutoFi, we've invested over the last three and a half, really over the last four and a half, five years in developing a really tight lender integrated checkout experience. For us, we focused all of our effort on what it is that we're best at, which is delivering a checkout experience. But a checkout experience it is one piece of a much larger puzzle. And one of the questions we hear from our dealers over and over and over again is how do I use marketing and merchandising to acquire more customers and get those customers into my digital retailing? Now, um, here's what I want to say first off. I want to give a massive shout out to the dealers that have agreed to be a part of this today. It takes a ton of courage. It takes a ton of commitment. It takes a, a, a whole lot of, 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 of real trust to put yourself out there. So what we've done today is Brian has agreed to look at five AutoFi, four or five AutoFi dealers who are doing a really good job with AutoFi, who are converting well, who are following up well, who have good systems and processes. And Brian's gonna do a deep dive review of their merchandising web space and point out anything that Brian can find that they can improve on. Each one of these dealers gave us the okay to share their information and allow Brian to look through and give them feedback. Now. It takes a lot of guts, man. Like, I'm incredibly proud. And I got to tell you, I talked to GMs like Mike Law over at LaFontaine, who was like, look, man, he's like, this, there's no ego tied to my website. Everything I want is that website to be the best it can possibly be so we can convert at the highest rate. The feedback yeah. I heard from our dealers over and over is, I don't care what you do. You can, you know, say whatever you want to say. Tell us what we can do to improve that website. So we brought the best in the business, Mr. Brian Pash. Now, Brian Pash has a long history in our industry of being an incredible expert when it comes to everything from Google Analytics and, and, and digital marketing to website merchandising and design. He hosts a couple of the best conferences in the business when it comes to those things. And he's written multiple books on the topic. So when Brian agreed to come to our web, webinar and do this, I was ecstatic. And then when he took it a step further and said, hey, why don't you send me some dealers and I'll go through their websites and we'll do a review together. I was even more ecstatic. So uh, the 430 people that are on here right now, please Come on. join me in giving a big warm welcome to Mr. Brian Pat. Come on, let's do it. Let's go. All right, Brian, well, I'm going to stop the share and I'm going to flip it over to you. First off, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Um, from the bottom of my heart and everyone at AutoFi, we appreciate you doing this. We're really excited to, uh, to what you see. Um, I will give a right. caveat. Brian is not a man to mince words. He's going to call it like he sees it. And he's going to um, share everything that he can to help our dealers and those dealers that are on here improve their results with digital retailing. And uh, Joe, can everyone see my screen? Okay. Yep. I can see your okay. screen. Just beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. So uh, let me pick up what Joe said. I'm going to be myself, which is just blunt and to the point. Every dealer can learn from what I'm going to talk about today. I would say I still haven't found... Uh, more than one or two percent of all dealership websites that I look at that pass my merchandising test. And I'll share some stories along the way, but I want to make sure we have time for questions. I also created a PDF booklet for you to download. So everyone who registered for the webinar, it will have some worksheets on what I call a modern brand promise. It will have links to dealers, marketing videos, and some other resources to help you. So make sure that you get that PDF book as, as well. Now, there is no shortage of opinions on where our industry is going. And I'm an optimist, so I believe that we're going to get back into selling cars. Um, there's going to be some impact to our economy. No one really knows what that's going to look like. But here's what I do know. There are things you could do today that could double your sales opportunities, double your sales opportunities based on what traffic is coming to your website. So I think this is absolutely relevant. And as Joe mentioned, as they've created the best checkout system, here's the thought, how do we get more people into that system? 
I think that the COVID virus was, in a sense, a perfect storm. What was the pivot point? For the last two years, I've been traveling around the country hosting workshops with dealers talking about digital retailing. And tell you the truth, dealers were making a lot of money. So the fact that consumers wanted the process faster, easier, mostly online, was really being conflicted because the dealer says, look, I'm making money. I've been doing the same thing. I don't think people really want that much of a change. So the truth of the matter is, is here we are uh, in quarantine and now things have changed. You see every major news outlet is talking about the impact of retail. What is it going to look like after this virus? And of course, this is a article from USA Today. I think that AutoFi is in the right place to help dealers pivot their business. Behind every door of an OEM meeting is a conversation that looks like this, that we need to have more clear and transparent selling prices. We need to make the connection from the online experience to the store more seamless. Then when someone arrives, we need to have a more interactive discussion on finance, accessories, leading to a confident purchase and increased loyalty. And as a result, um, you're going to see more OEM efforts push into the uh, dealer network. Obviously, Ford and Autofy's partnership has been a strong one, and Ford was one of the first to really push their dealers into considering a modern retail experience. 18 months ago, I published the first book for automotive digital retailing called Just Faster. And I asked 100 shoppers, consumers, who just bought a car, who were actively shopping for a car, I said, just give me two words, two different words that you would like to describe your next car buying experience. And here's the word cloud. So those of you who have heard me over the last year or two, I say that consumers want it faster, easier, mostly online, to save them time so they could do more of the fun things in life. This week also is a big week for our company because after 18 months working with a pilot group of Nissan dealers, my brother Glenn and I published the first, what I believe, comprehensive blueprint for automotive digital retailing for an OEM. And this just went out to every Nissan dealer in North America and around the world. So when I'm talking to you today, it's because I am not here to sell you anything. I'm here to help you see what I see with my eyes is that we need to remove some of the barriers to allowing our business to transform. When dealers talk about remote retailing or digital retailing, many just think, well, I'm going to call up AutoFi, bolt something onto my website, and man, things are going to be awesome. In fact, most OEMs are asking their digital retailing partners or dealers the wrong question. They, they want to know, well, how many cars did you sell from digital retailing this month? And that's not the right question. The truth of the matter is, is that transforming a dealership's culture isn't easy. And so when a dealer says to me, Brian, I really want to embrace digital retailing. I want a better or more modern retail experience. Here's what I tell them. It's 50% leadership, 20% technology, 15% merchandising, 15% marketing. And today I'm here to talk about purchasing, purchase, <laughs> merchandising and marketing because believe it or not, they're often overlooked. How do I summarize the last two years of working with dealers? Well, listen, today tools like AutoFi really are robust in giving the consumer the tools they need to see the affordability of a vehicle and to cut down the time it takes to buy a car. And even though not perfect, it is getting easier to connect the online experience to the store. Dealers are working out that process. And that's another whole separate webinar topic. But what are some little things that dealers are learning? Well, they can make it clearer if somebody does work online, how to appreciate them when they come in. But the two things that I want to focus on today is dealers are still struggling with simplifying their websites to get more people to use, for example, the Audify tool, and most are failing on creating a modern brand promise. And let me just say here, um, I received no compensation for anyone signing up for Audify. Okay, I just want to be clear, 
this is just me talking straight to you, but I was listening to a sermon this morning and it was talking about, hey, surrender. Like, are you going to surrender your life to God? And the, the pastor was saying is, there's no such thing as 82.5% surrender. You know, you're either in or you're not. Here's what I'm going to tell you. By looking at every Autify website that Joe sent me, not a single dealer is committed to Autify. They're not 100% committed to Autify. And again, why shouldn't you be if you believe that this tool provides the resources that consumers want? When I talk about a modern brand promise, I'm talking about does your market message resonate with consumers? Does it have a whiff up? Okay. Now, there are five recycle and, and regurgitated marketing messages that dealers use around the country. Here they are. And for some time, these messages did work. They did work better than others over time. But today, here's what I'm going to tell you. None of these have wide appeal. None of these have the appeal they once did. Hey, the largest dealer, the largest inventory on the ground, that was awesome before the internet because when people had to drive to a dealership, they would go to the dealer that had the most selection. Today, who has the most selection? Cars.com or Car Gurus or Auto Trader. That's where the largest selection is. Being family owned and operated may be important at a previous generational cycle. I don't think it has anything on my 23 year old's mind that where he buys his next car, whether that is a corporate owned facility or family owned and operated. So my question is when you're marketing, when you're trying to reinvent the business, how are you getting more people to come to your store? So I'm gonna talk about two things, brand message and brand promise. Two different things. Brand message is that catchy phrase like Newton Fast Pass, the fastest and easiest way to buy your next car. That's a brand message. The brand promise, here's Matt Blatt, one of the dealers that uh, Joe sent me. So Matt Blatt's brand message is the Matt Blatt advantage. And then he describes what are the elements of that advantage and you could see them on the right. Every dealer, I believe, needs to focus on creating a brand message and a brand promise. And in the PDF document that I gave Joe to distribute are some worksheets on this. There are some great dealers who've really perfected their brand message and brand promise, like the Champ Automotive Group, one price, one person, one hour, car buying redefined. But there's a lot of great dealers uh, from the uh, Nissan Pilot, Newton Fast Pass, the fast and easiest way to buy your car online, or Legacy Fast Lane, or Weiler Direct. But I'm trying to say these are brand messages that get consumers' attention, and then, and then the brand promise should be a list of whiffums. Developing a clear brand promise, here's my challenge to you, should apply to sales and service. Although Autofy is just focused right now on that shopping cart experience for the sales process, here's my point. When you hear Newton Fast Pass, do you understand it applies to sales and service? Newton Fast Pass, the fastest and easiest way to buy your next car. Or Newton Fast Pass, the fastest and easiest way to service your car. You see what I'm doing? I'm using one brand message and just tweaking it a little for fixed stops and variable ops. Why don't we have one? Here's because you didn't need one. <laughs> um, you know, the, the truth of the matter is dealers are just overspending, shouting price payment, price payment, price payment. And now there's going to be a group of dealers who are on this webinar who are, are already using Autofy or considering it. And now understanding that it's marketing and merchandising and the brand promise that pulls it all together. And this is how you're going to gain, gain market share. In the past, it was okay of just copying being your neighbor. So here's a quick little example. ABC Toyota Fastlane. I saw some Toyota dealers here from uh, uh, SET. Great to have you there. So ABC Toyota Fastlane, the fastest and easiest way to buy your next car. That's the brand message. What's the brand promise? Okay, we have clear pricing on our vehicles. Hey, customize your payments, calculate your trade online to save you time. Hey, schedule a visit and we'll pick up right where you left off. 
After you test drive a vehicle and select it, we'll get you out within an hour and buy with confidence with our seven day exchange program. What I'm trying to say is this is the brand promise, those five whiffums. When you say, hey, we'll treat you like family, out. Hey, we have trained and factory certified technicians, out. Why? Everyone can say those things. You need to have five whiffums, or I bet like this, the lifetime powertrain warranty. I don't even know what, if consumers know what that means, let alone for me, that's a wasted breath because I've never had my car break down. I've never had driving a car and say, oh shit, my powertrain went out, uh, never. So what do these storyboards, I'm not a producer, but let me just explain. Your brand message can be broken up into sub-segments based on your brand promise. So the first video could have a woman shopping and she's on her website and the camera's over the shoulder looking at the phone and saying, uh, Newton Nissan, our fast pass technology allows you to shop our vast selection of cars and find the perfect vehicle in seconds. That's life in the fast lane. Then the second video, she's in her kitchen on her computer. It's like, with New uh, Newton Nissan fast pass, you can select the vehicle, estimate your payments, value your trade, and do all as, as much work as you'd like from home to save you time. That's life in the fast lane. Then here's the reception, camera over the shoulder, walking in the door. Hey, since you did your work online, you can go right into the fast lane to show the reception desk with a red carpet that says fast lane, where we'll pick up right where you left off to save you time. That's life in the fast lane. Then test drive. Test drive as many cars as you want, but because you're using Using our fast lane technology, we'll get you in and out within an hour. That's life in the fast. You see what I'm doing? I'm breaking up the brand promise, which is we make it faster, easier, mostly online to save you time to do more of the fun things. What's more of the fun things? Being with your family and friends, driving your new car. So when we work around the country, what does Glenn and I really do? We help dealers with web merchandising, the ad strategy, which media to pick, and sales process. And this is the perfect complement to Autofy because Autofy helps you create the best checkout experience to configure it to display the payments that you want, but there's other pieces. And then, well, this is where I wanna show you. How do we go from good to better and then better to best? And again, I just wanna thank all the dealers who gave me permission. Um, here's a couple of things. You saw me say that one of the five recycled things is we're the cheapest with the lowest price. You say, Brian, I'm number one in the country and that's my brand promise. We're the lowest price. And here's what I'm gonna say to you, respectfully, great, you're doing fantastic. You could be doing better. So what would he mean? It's like, because price doesn't appeal to me. I'm not gonna take four hours on a Saturday to buy a car to save a hundred bucks, okay? So it's this balance of, hey, Brian, I'm crushing it. Okay, let's get better. What, is, what does that mean, Brian? I can even do better, yes. When we talk about merchandising, I'm talking about the basics here. Um, does your website clearly demonstrate the benefits of doing business with you? Remember, you're not Starbucks, you're not Walmart. You didn't have a multi-million dollar branding campaign. So believe it or not, consumers sometimes, if I drive down and see like West Palm Beach Toyota, there are some consumers that think that Toyota owns that store, right? They, they don't understand that a local family, or a business, local businessman owns that store. So what are the clear benefits? Do you have a clear path to allow consumers to do what they want? Are you making it easy to get their questions answered? Have you reduced the number of CTA buttons, call to action buttons? You could look at this list here. These are merchandising basics, and of course you'll have the video to re refer back. What am I gonna focus on today? I can't do a deep, deep dive, but I'm gonna focus on homepage, search results page, VDPs, and briefly talk about lead form thank you pages. Now, when I talk about lead form thank you pages, this is a huge win for most dealers. I thought I fixed this years ago, but obviously people forget. But years ago, I started a conversation is, isn't somebody who submits a lead the unicorn? Like Joe, have you seen any unicorns lately? I mean, where you live, are there any oh. unicorns running around? Haven't seen any, and then my little girls have lots of toy unicorns, but never seen a real unicorn. Okay, well listen, the reason why I say unicorn is very simple. 
dealers would love to have more people submit leads. I'm like, how come I don't get more leads? Well, okay, let's say someone submits a lead. They came to this Toyota Irving website and look, they have a clear call to action. There's the color violator, personalize your payment, but underneath it is request more info. So that ugly form comes up and after they, after the unicorn, the person who's really valuable, you send them to the single ugliest page on the website. I mean, it's the truth. Go ahead and submit a lead on your website today. I would bet eight out of 10 people, have, if you would agree, oh, that's the ugliest page. This is the perfect opportunity. Remember, they're the unicorn. They just gave you all their information. Shouldn't this be the opportunity to educate them of your online buying? Look, it should be a video. And the video should go something like this. Hi, this is Brian Pass, General Manager of Toyota of Irving. And if you're watching this video during normal business hours, you'll be pleased to know that a member of our sales team will be calling you and emailing you within a few minutes. If you're watching this video after normal business hours, you'll be pleased to know that someone from our sales team will be contacting you on the next business day. But before you leave, I have six buttons below. Check out our new car incentives, our CPO vehicles. Our, check out our service department and the services that we offer. Check out our value pack. You see what I'm doing? I am telling people how we do business, right? What they can expect and the benefits. Why do I bring this up? Is because, oh, Joe, you want to say something? Yeah, so, so I, I want to jump in for two seconds because for us at Autofund, one of the things that we really believe in is that any one of those call to action should never take a customer to a dead end, right? So if you've got that unicorn and that unicorn is saying, I want more information, we should just give them more information. So for us, what that means is that each one of those should be a pathway to a car deal. So whether it's, I want more information, fill out your info. Oh, by the way, here's your entire car deal. You can see what your payments look like. You can add your trade. You can add special rebates. So for us, we think that like, or at least I think that, we can even go from that level to the next level, which is the funnel is actually open on the website and the customer can start moving themselves deeper and deeper through whatever channel of, of, of CTA or button that they call on. Absolutely, and this is where the integration of that form into say digital retailing becomes so important because they have provided information. So effectively they open the, the form gate if a dealer form gated AutoFi and that could bring them right in. So there's. Lots of things that we should be thinking about. But one of the, the other things thing, Brian, I, I wanted to let you know is while we're going through this, we will be launching polls. So if you see polls pop up, like, what's your CTA closing rate on this? What's this? Just, I just want to give you a heads up because I forgot to Great. tell you beforehand. Love it. Love it. So one of the things I want to encourage you to do is when customers come in and use the Autify tool and then come into the showroom, would you start asking them some questions? Was it easy? Was it clear? Um, is there anything that we could have done to make it simpler? So now let's jump in. And again, I want to just say that um, if you think I'm calling your baby ugly, I will about five times. Okay, so let's move forward. Um, great pop up. So I wrote about this when this first came out. Um, that your home page should have a pop-up, let people know what you're doing differently. So Northside Honda, excellent. And I love the fact that they mentioned the Northside Express Concierge Service, which is, which is again, a uh, time saver. Uh, I would have liked to seen some branding here on whatever their digital retailing process is. Uh, when the pop-up goes down, very clear message, we bring the car buying to you, okay? So that's a cool message, well done on saying that we do something different than other people, but notice it's not called something, right? There is no brand message, it's just like, we'll bring the car to you. Now, the reason why I say that is, if you're gonna do it, let's make it something bigger than life. Let's call it something. Disneyland called it Fast Pass. They didn't say, hey, you, you want to skip the line, spend some money. No, that's not what the web is. It says like, I want Fast Pass. I want Fast Pass. Okay, well, okay. Now, when I went to the SRP, this is where things got a little hairy. Um, the primary call to action, this top of the SRP, is promoting a trade. Okay. Now, the problem with this is that I don't think that this is the best place to put this banner because I would be calling my online shopping experience, okay? Online shopping experience something. I'd be using this space to educate. 
The other problem is that this trade tool is different than the trade tool inside of Autofy. So here's the question. Is your website designed to help people buy a car and see the affordability? Or do you want to bash them with three or four or five different weird looking forms? Do you want to process? See, to me, this is a dealer who's still stuck on leads. You say, Brian, well, trade in leads are great leads. I'm not saying they're not great leads. I'm just saying, is this the number one thing that's going to separate you when there's a hundred places, a hundred places where consumers can get their trade? Now we take a look at the uh, SRP and here's the SRP. I'm just scrolling down. Okay. And the scroll down is uh, very simple now, right? We have value your trade, watch, on every single car, calculate your payment and live pricing. Okay. Now again, uh, value my trade, you would think that this would be an awesome thing, but it's really taking them through a different experience. Um, what is the primary CTA? Now, the primary CTA should be your uh, call to action. And I love the fact that they call this live pricing. I just didn't like what happened. So um, they are not driving people into the AutoFi system. They're moving to people to a conversation. So we're going to get back to that. Then when I go to the VDP, here we are again. The whole push of this website is not the car, the star. The car is not the star. The knowing the trade is, it's like people know how to get the trade value of their car. Matter of fact, it's on the VDP. What should this space be? This should be telling your process, what that process is. No one has explained to any consumer what live price means. The first time I've ever seen the word live price. As a result, calculate payment is clear. There's the value of my trade again. I'm wasting space. Now, the reason why I said that is when uh, we went into this value my trade, okay, it was a different tool than that what was in the, um, uh, this is a perk tool, which gave a specific price. And then if I went in the AutoFi tool, it gave me a whole different experience and another different price. So um, the odd thing about the whole process was why was not the effort to get someone into this amazing checkout system, either talk to them or getting them into the checkout system. And I didn't see the continuity here for that, meaning the AutoFi system was so simple and e easy. Why the conflict? Now, let me just make a Pension about the live pricing. Um, the live pricing brought up a chat box. And, and so I just said, can I get the live price on the car? And the operator would not give me the live price to say, well, I'd like to, you know, uh, I'd like to get your contact information. I said, well, I just want to know the live price. And they said, well, I want to know your contact information. I said, well, why do I need to give you? I just want to know what the live price is. And then the operator said, I'm, uh, let me see if I can connect you to a manager and the manager never got on. So I'm going to talk about moving forms to conversations, which is absolutely right, but the conversation wasn't handled properly. Joe, you had a question. Yeah. So, so Brian, you know, I, I, we just did the poll on the number of CTAs that VDPs currently have. And I mean, if you look at it, 30, almost, it was almost 60% of the years have three or four CTAs. Do you feel like having like multiple CTAs erodes the effectiveness of a dealer with having uh, like digital retailing implemented? Like if I have five CTAs and one's digital retailing, do you think that makes it less effective? Well, it absolutely will. And as we go through all of these examples, you're going to see a theme is that no one thought, like there was absolutely no way that I believe that SRP and VDP should all be about trade. It should be about the experience and the benefit. There was no whiff them for the consumer and all that merchandising. And every SRP car and every VDP had value my trade. What's the point? Well, it's because they're hooked on leads. They're not hooked on the experience. They're hooked on leads. And the question is, is either you're committed to digital retailing or not? That's the question. So, and, so you're saying and, this is all about like a mindset thing in the background. That like a, it is a mindset. We're just so addicted to leads. We can't, that we're just, we, we can't get out of our own way. But let me go through more examples because there are going to be questions. Yeah. So I went to Rickard and uh, I loved, by the way, look at 
Rickard Express. That's their brand message, right? Their brand message, they called it something, and then click here to learn would go in and the brand promise would obviously have details, right? So again, here's another example, brand message, Rickard Express. Okay, that catches someone's ear. You understand that Express or Fastlane or FastPass implies time. What does every person on this webinar value? Time and convenience. Okay, so I love the fact that their homepage talked about that. But here's where things broke down. At the top of the SRP, there was no explanation really of what to do or what the express experience was gonna be. So the homepage had something like checkout service, pickup and delivery, click here to learn more. I would like to brought, bring, bring this in. So the SRP missed an opportunity for another quick refresher of WIFM, okay? And then here was the SRP, I'm scrolling down. Now a couple things here. Uh, this is the first time I saw an SRP that had no call to action buttons and the consumer had to infer that the way you got to the car was clicking, okay? And I haven't seen this before, so I don't know about this. But notice what the number one photo overlay was, was the Power, power Life Lifetime Warranty, okay? This is a missed opportunity. This is no whiff them if, if, if dealers really want to challenge me on that we'll, we'll take it offline we'll do a mud wrestling match but if if Rickard Express is the thing that you say every consumer values time and convenience and that should be your photo overlay not a vague power life lifetime warranty and so then I looked to the VDP and it, of course, had a very detailed math box, okay? This looked like almost a calculus exam, but okay, it, it's there for a reason. This is their choice, which is uh, Transparency Plus. But at the end, here's what I liked. I liked that their primary call to action was a color violator, and that's a pattern you'll see. You want a green button. Green, number one, is uh, the best CTA color unless your website's green, okay? And occasionally I've seen some dealers with green websites. But look at this box, get this vehicle, what does that mean? Well, isn't that what Start Express Checkout really is? Get our best price and price watch, value my trade, isn't that inside of the Startup Express? Apply for financing, isn't that part? Okay, so really what do you want consumers to do? If at the top of the page you had a back that says with Express Checkout, you can apply for financing and value your trade. Do you understand what I'm doing? I'm using that white space to explain to consumers what Express Checkout is. No one explained what that green button is. Now, the other thing is, is absolutely there's no reason for that green button to be at the bottom. I think that should be at the top before the blue box starts, meaning the blue box would shift down and the green button would be at the top. Okay, because really consumers are maybe going to go up and down on that blue box, but the green button, I think, should be standing on its own. Now, um, this is the top of the VDP in, in real time, okay, meaning, or what, not, not what I'm saying, real time, but just uh, uh, at full scale. And then as I scroll down, this is what I, I looked at. Now, what was odd is I clicked on get this. Uh, excuse me, get our best price. Why isn't this a conversation? Why doesn't this fire right up into a conversation? Hi, this is Brian. I'm uh, here to get your best price. Who am I speaking with? Jim. Okay. Um, but notice what happens when I click on get best price, the price watch form comes up, which of course would confuse the consumer because it, it's not even matching whatever button they put in. But this is a fail. You see, we've been calling websites our virtual showroom for years, but we really treat it as an abandoned lot. Every form on this website should be moved to a conversation except for financing, which is already inside, meaning this should be an immediate conversation. When you move these stupid 20 plus year old forms to conversations, listen to what happens. You double your sales opportunities. Dealers, listen to me. You spend money to drive people to your website and then you have people who have questions and here's what you tell them. I'm not gonna answer your question right now. 
It would be the equivalent as they walked into your showroom, said, I'm here to buy a car. I have some questions. And the receptionist says, sit down the chair, summon over the next two, three or four hours, we'll get back to you. You say, Brian, that's silly. No, no, you built a business model to serve the people who walk in the door. Why don't you want to serve the people? Oh, Brian, it's better to chase them in the BDC. You know, the BDC that I can't staff, what I have constant turnover, uh, these, the BDC people won't follow process. Oh, you mean those people that you're always chasing to do the right thing? Why not just talk? Um, to get this vehicle, uh, again, what, why get the vehicle if the green button was properly explained that you could explore your payments, reserve the vehicle, value your trade. These are all wasted. Um, and then look at this wow experience. Somebody got there and says, I want this vehicle. And you're like, yes, let me show you the ugliest of ugliest forms. We, we, we don't even have time to give you any of, just thanks, your request is sent. We're not gonna tell you when we're gonna get back to you. We're not telling you shit, that's it, you're done. Really? The person's so not shopping? Brian, so this is all like, I just keep coming back to something you said earlier, which is, this is just all a, a behavioral outpouring of our addiction to leads. That's correct. We can't help ourselves. We can't help ourselves. Um, so, you know, the, the, you know, bottom line for me, okay, the bottom line for me is we have to look at our website. And this is the version on the mobile phone. I want to be clear, huge price stack and the express. Okay. So we have, this is how it looks. That's a lot of information. I'd want that green button up top. That's me. I'd want that green button right up top. That's where I would want it to make the most sense. Let's go to Jordan Ford. Um, homepage, obviously pushing the incentives. And then they had a slider. The second, the, oh, let me get here. Get in, get in this. Second slider had a lot about their buy from home. Okay. And then there's another slider. Okay. So they're talking now in a language called Express Shop. Okay. I go into the SRP and now I'm repeating this concept of payments. Okay, but remember, this is just me now. Everybody's gonna be offering now 0% for X number of months. I, I have this little line, you can buy completely online. I, I'd want to be talking more about my express shop and what does that mean? So this is what the SRP looks like, okay? It's a very detailed SRP. And as we zoom in, we'll see on the right, we have a clear color violator, right? So explore your payments is a color violator, right? I love that. The primary button should be green. It should be the color violator. But request more information and text us. Now, every dealer has text pretty much on their website, normally sitting in the right-hand corner, popping up like a whack-a-mole. I have no idea why this text text us buttons there. It's like, it sits like right next to the chat person who keeps on popping up like a mole. So it's, it's again, uh, we're addicted to buttons. Let's get rid of that. And then request more information. Somebody's on this VDP or this SRP, they click request more information, go right to a chat conversation. Hi, this is Brian. Um, I'm a sales associate at Jordan Ford. How can I help you with this Econoline cutaway? So in this I have a question for you, Brian. Yes, go ahead. Sorry, sorry to keep interrupting. I'm so excited. So when you're on an SRP page like that, yep. do you recommend, uh, for just kind of an overall statement, a simple SRP or a detailed SRP? Well, really, it depends, right, on the SRP design. So like a dealer, in, uh, dealer Inspire website or CDK website or Dealer E-Process website be different. There are some SRPs um, that actually you can look at photos and do things. And there are other website designs that don't, so they only can look at photos on a VDP, right? So that is a little bit on whether or not the website company wants more VDP views. Um, but there was an interesting study that consumers will stay on an SRP and do shopping if it's a fully functional SRP. In this particular case, I don't uh, consider this a fully functional uh, photo gallery. Uh, obviously, the sneak peek would pop up, yeah. you know, another pop up. Um, all right, keep going, sorry. Yeah, no, no, these are all good questions. So this is the uh, VDP as I checked in, 
And you'll notice at the top, there's this little sneaky green button, confirm availability, which I think is somewhat insulting to the average consumer. Oh, let me guess. I go to Amazon and I'm looking for like a product and it says there's three left. <laughs> you know, you go to Macy's, there's two left. I mean, everyone knows that if this vehicle's there, 99% of the time, this vehicle will be there. Yet, confirm availability is still used. Uh, and of course, the the experience is that ugly form. So the confirm availability and request more information basically says, I'm not going to serve you. I'd rather chase you in a BBC. But if you change these two CTA buttons to a conversation, you will double your sales opportunity. We'll say, Brian, we may have to staff our business differently. Yes. And, and hold on, that would lower our cost per sale. Yes. And we'd have a better customer experience. Yes, but that's, that may be hard. Okay, get over yourself. Get over yourself. Because really what you're doing is just bringing people to a website. You should know that at Confirm Availability, less than 40% of the people fill it out and they use so many bad email addresses or fake or throwaway email addresses, you only talk to 20%. That means eight out of 10 people who click that Confirm Availability and you require an email address, you never talk to them. How about talking to 90% of the people who click on that button. Oh shit, that's a great idea. Okay, and all the major chat companies can do this. Um, look at that great experience. Wow, oh yeah, I feel really special. Notice, um, oh, that they really made me, oh uh, yeah, yeah. Nothing more knowing that we had a hassle-free experience. This is a hassle. I just asked the question, is the car there? And you're like, we're not gonna tell you if the car is there. You're gonna have to fill apart and we're not gonna tell you when you're gonna find out if the car is there. This isn't a hassle-free experience. This is somebody who's not committed to serving. They're committed to chasing. I got a question for you. Uh, like, What percentage of dealers do you think have this experience? I, for me, it feels like it's 95, 98, 99. It's something. This is why this webinar is so important. I'm telling you that whether you're a dealer inspire website, talk to Joe Chur about the data, whether you're using car now, talk mm. to the check or Gubbagoo, I'm telling you, we've had dozens and dozens and dozens of case studies where if you just serve, not chase, the experience is more consistent. And here's Jordan Ford again, guys, I'm just being straight. If you don't want to get better, okay, I'm sorry. But there's no reason to have a text us button when the, the whack-a-mole keeps on coming up on every page. It's very clear if they want to text with you that they can text with you. So um, here's Matt Black. Um, buy 100% online. Okay. So uh, I like what Matt Black has done. You'll see this in a minute. As you scroll down, he calls it the Matt Black advantage. Uh, just straight, Matt. Uh, if you're here or if there is a Matt Blatt, um, the advantage doesn't have the power of a brand message, okay? So do you understand fast pass, fast lane, express lane, buy direct has a word. When someone says, oh, the Matt Blatt advantage, it doesn't appeal to me on that most consumers uh, value time and convenience, okay? So, but that's the, if that's the case, um, buy 100% online with the Matt Blatt advantage. You've got to bring it into that home page. I want you to have a clear brand message that gets people excited. Now, here is uh, a great example. Matt Blatt really loved this. Look what they tell people. They're using that white space, not for a stupid trade-in tool that even conflicts with AutoFi or some generic a promotion on one car that you'll see that many times. They're saying, look, browse a vehicle and then click on that calculate payment button. And notice the button is there. It's the only button. Holy cow, you mean somebody actually? Like Matt Blatt says, I'm in to making it faster, easier, mostly online. It's get boom. Okay, so then I go to the a VDP. And of course they had to sneak in that confirm availability button. Now, uh, this was a weak commitment because it, it's almost invisible, okay? But this is, again, they just can't help themselves. They want that ugly uh, form. 
I love the fact that they had a button that said how to buy online, just in case, right? Just in case the person missed, or if an ad took them directly to a VDP, right? A Google ads inventory ad or something. But again, value trade to get pre-approved. Matt Blatt, are you in or out? Are you 80% committed or 60% committed? How about 100% committed? Because see, your calculate your but your calculate button, you just told them they get, can get pre-approved and value their trade. Matter of fact, where does these buttons take? They take them completely off the VDP. Listen, to another tool. Huh? I'm what, are you saying Autofy isn't a good tool? Well, that's what it says to me. It's like, oh, but if we did Autofy, we'd have everything in one package instead of leads in the CRM all over the place, like Swiss cheese putting all this together. So there's that awesome experience. Hey, you know, we turn our inventory so fast that we don't even know what's in stock. Lie, okay, lie. Most dealers today, you know, you, you're inventory feed uh, gets sucked in three, four, even five times a day. And then look, oh, Matt Platt was doing so good, but this is the record, uh, the second worst, thank you, an experienced internet manager will call you shortly. I don't, an internet manager, what's an internet manager? Am I having problems with my Wi-Fi? I, I am not sure what that is. This was the perfect opportunity to explain the process. Or as Joe said, hey, get them back into the tool. Uh, reinforce that they don't have to leave. They could, wow, another missed opportunity. Obviously- yeah, just, Brian, just a quick heads up. We have about two minutes before we're gonna to get to questions and answers. We got a bunch of questions in here. Yep, great, thanks. So obviously when we went into the tool, we could do all this lovely stuff, including trade and finance. Um, if you're dealing with subprime, turning forms to conversations is even more important. As a side note, people always ask about what to do with subprime. What does something look like that's awesome? Go to Nissan Newton of Gallatin, pop up, shop now. Um, homepage, well documented with their fast pass. Top of the SRP, clear color violator. Here's the key though. Um, even on the VDP, color violator, and those two buttons go to conversations. This website is formless. There is no forms. This is a smooth, and you schedule a test drive, the chat bot starts giving you dates, you pick the time and date you want, it's confirmed. They have a great ad campaign, and in the book, I give you lots of examples of people who are marketing and advertising. You're, then, once you fix your website, your digital marketing has to support that message. I believe it has to be in video. Okay, and there's great dealers who do videos. We got to bring these videos on an omni-channel process, explain how it works. This is the perfect place to put these videos on that thank you page and then start targeting. In your local market, you should be talking about desk, uh, uh, set-top box data targeting from Spectrum and Effective. You need to have an omni-channel video message about your express buying service. That includes YouTube pre-roll, Facebook retargeting, everything to promote. Your next steps, and then we're gonna open up the questions, is take a look at the book and get, get serious. Are you gonna commit to AutoFi? You're gonna be half in, you're still gonna be there. Also, as you get ready to come out of this at-home uh, stay strategy, I'm building a special ad campaign that dealers can leverage to really um, accelerate out of COVID. If you are thinking about how am I going to really accelerate sales, reach out to me, just brian at brianpash.com. I want to tell you about this program. And then, of course, as Joe said, our conference, um, which is going to have a big focus on digital retailing, is coming up. New dates in July. And Joe, I'd love to have you there because you're one of the most passionate speakers in the industry. We have an opportunity to change uh, automotive retail. Let's just work Amen. together to get it done. Absolutely. All right, Brian, we had the questions flowing in this entire time. Thank you again for doing this. Um, one of the questions we saw multiple times was, as a dealer that has a manufacturer that requires map pricing, what is my best strategy? Great. So um, last May at the DMSC conference, I challenged all the chat companies and website vendors to get rid of forms, okay? And I'll tell you this story. 
this dealer was a one price store and then the map pricing came in, but they had branded themselves home of the no bull price. Okay. That was just in context. And when you went to their website, they had, they were a one price dealer. Then they couldn't do it anymore. So they had to put a button that said, get your no bull price, right? Because of map pricing. They came back from the conference and they figured out something which was brilliant. And anybody with map pricing can do this. They made two buttons. It said, get no bull price now. And the second button was email me the no bull price. What was amazing is that the email leads didn't go down. The people who didn't want to talk with somebody uh, pressed the second button. The other button, which was get the no bull price right now, kicked into a script that I developed, which is OEM compliant. It goes something like this. Hi, this is Brian. I'm here to give you your noble price. Who am I speaking with? And Joe says, Joe. Oh, Joe. What's your last name, Joe? Oh, St. John. Great. Uh, Subaru won't allow us to show our low, low noble price online, but I can text it to you right now. What's your mobile number? Joe puts in his mobile number. Two seconds later, his phone blows up. You, would, you, would you accept the text from this Subaru dealer? He says, yes, the price comes in. The text operator says, hey, Joe, I just texted you the price. You'll see that the car is 35,500. Yes, I got it, super. Can I now help you customize your payments or schedule a test drive? You know what I just did? I doubled my sales opportunities with map pricing by giving consumers what they wanted, not chasing them, I served them and it works amazing. The next question, Brian, is online dealers. So in your opinion, does the Carvana and Vrooms of the world have an advantage over dealers today because they've been operating remotely and have been able to offer transactions direct to their consumers online? Well, I think um, there are some cynical dealers say, Brian, we've been doing remote deliveries all our lives. You know, like we deliver cars, okay? Um, two things. I don't believe Carvana has a sustainable advantage, okay? If, listen, if dealers take digital retailing seriously or re remote retailing, you see, most dealers, as I just showed you, just bolted AutoFi on their website. They didn't explain it. They didn't put the brand promise and they don't have marketing videos. What has Carvana done? Created a brand message and a brand promise and then they put it out in video. Dealers who commit 100% and turn all forms into conversations and use Autofy and come up with a brand message and a brand promise, and then between Facebook and YouTube and their local cable providers have an omni-channel video education process, they'll win and they have the local service and the local support of their community. So, so let me just, I just want to spin in here because this, this for me uh, is such an important part. I think we hear like digital retail or remote selling or omnichannel, all these like terms, right? And we think of them as like a piece of technology, but really the piece of technology is what unlocks your ability to deliver all that, right? It's, it's having that technology like Autofy allows you to run a marketing message that is consumer centric around speed and convenience and transparency, right? It allows you to implement the systems and processes, but this is actually a shift in mindset and a shift in behavioral patterns in the way that we operate dealers. And I think it becomes very challenging because in most dealerships, it gets relegated as like an internet department thing, which we're going to have these new leads that are a little bit better, but we don't shift the way that we follow up with those leads. Or we've got this express shops so where we're going to run one little ad saying, hey, this is part of an overreaching brand problem. That for me is the takeaway from here, is that it has to become integrated across the entirety of the way that we operate our business. All right, yes. Brian, I got a phone call from our friends at Germain. So Jared Kilway gave me a call while I was on this webinar and on, asked Jared. the question. I know Jared well. <laughs> asked the question that we got from a couple of other folks in the chat here, which is, Brian, talk to us about the differences between mobile and desktop. So in your review, you did a lot of desktop review. We saw a couple of mobile screenshots. Most customers are coming in on mobile. Can you give us what needs to be different on mobile versus desktop? <laughs> okay. Um, and I should, that's a, a great, great question, Jared. I should have uh, done more mobile shots because these forms on mobile are even more ridiculous. Like 
confirm availability, uh, get the car, or get the best price. I mean, hey guys, they are the unicorn and you're popping up a form, which is even harder to fill out on a mobile phone. You can start a conversation. You say, Brian, we're not structured to answer people's questions when they're on their website. Get over yourself. Get over this broken thing thinking that it's better to chase them, force them into something. Listen, less than 40% will fill out and half will use such crappy email addresses. They won't respond to you. So serve 20%, talk to 20% of your forms or talk to 90%. You choose. But on a mobile experience, it's even more important to simplify CTAs to two things. Explore the affordability of this car using your AutoFi tools, which includes your value your trade and debt pre-approved. And if you have any other questions, talk to me right now. I'm ready to help. Thanks, so, Brian. I was, I, was in, I was in a meeting with a dealer principal and a general manager and a general sales manager, kind of a group of people. And the GSM piped up at kind of at this point in the conversation that they weren't structured to be able to deliver against this. And I feel like the dealer principal had the greatest answer ever. He said, well, then we restructure. Like it was like, well, then we, if we're not structured for this, then we need to restructure. And I think that that's a critical component of all of this. Yeah, and I'll say one thing. Uh, Joe Chura uh, shared at AAS, our fall conference, some interesting data. If you move those CTA forms to conversations with a live person, you can double your sales opportunities. But you also can use a chat bot, and, and it jumps them up 50%. So uh, folks like CarNow, and Dealer Inspire have uh, workflows, right, that can ask questions and really start taking that data and getting the information that dealers want from the lead form and serve. And then if someone's not ready for the first 30 seconds, they can jump in and take over. But uh, I don't know any dealer who would say, oh, I can increase my website conversion 50% by putting in technology, not a stupid form. Like, yeah. It's time. All right, Brian, we got time for two more questions. Come on, bring them on. So here we go. You talked about Reichart not having any CTAs on their SRP. Comment came in that SoCal Media published some data that says 70% of engagement comes from SRP. Do you have any data to share with our team on SRP versus VDP? I can tell you this is a heated conversation that uh, I sometimes find myself in with some public dealer groups and dealer groups as a whole. So lay it on us, Brian. Great. Um, I, don't, I haven't seen the Sokol study, but dealer e-process, if you uh, send an email to joe at dealereprocess.com, Joe Gillespie is the owner. They did a study because on dealer e-process SRPs, they're like mini VDPs. So on the SRP, you could look at all the photos and the primary CTAs are on the SRP and VDP. So the conversation, all SRPs are not created equal. You have to ask yourself, does the SRP allow the consumer to play a video and go through all the photos and do the primary CTAs? What dealer process said is that they get more conversions, listen, on the SRPs and the VDPs. And here's the reason why. The SRPs were fully functional mini VDPs. But if the website was designed to inflate VDPs by making the SRPs dumb. Do you understand that? Of course, more people are going to leave the SRPs and go to the VDPs. So it's all about design. It's all about design. And for the most part, if the SRPs are fully functional, then you'll find, at least what Dealery Process said, that the SRPs will get more engagement and will generate more total conversions per month than the total VDP conversion. All right, this is the last one. It's coming with a, a tip as well. So Terry says, make sure if you're demoing a product from a vendor that they demo it in mobile. Amen, Terry. Thank you for saying that. Here's so your last important. question. Here's your last question, Brian. If you're going to have one CTA, such as calculate your payments, what is the best way to let a customer know they can use that button to also get a value for their trade or see if they can get approved? if that's what they're concerned about. Great, I, I, I want to go back to the Kia dealer that we looked at. Uh, they were so close. They said, look, find the car you want, and then the value payment. I would have liked 
the, the banner to have that blue, uh, the green button. You know what I mean? So here's what I'd like. Clean slate. I'd want the banner over the VDP and SRP say, show the green button that says calculate your payments. And it should say, by, by pressing this button, you can personalize your payments, value your trade, and get pre-approved. And you should say, one click to do whatever you'd like to see if this car is affordable for you. Why are we taking one thing like apply for financing or value my trade as if shit, we're just breaking apart the process because we're addicted to leads. Make the banner, have the button and say, this button does this, 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 and this to save you time to do, again, faster, easier, mostly online to save you time to do more of the fun things. That's what I would put on the SRP and VDP headers. Amen, Brian Pash. Thank you so much. One last note here. We have you gotten a lot of questions on how we're going to share this information. So I did share in the chat box that um, there's a link that you can register if you have not registered to ensure that we get you out um, all the content. You can also watch the replays there uh, additionally to that. Thanks again, Brian. Hey, Brian, I just want to get, before we wrap up, Brian Pash, thank you so much for joining us today. This was incredibly informative. Everybody give him a warm round of, of, of applause. Come on, come on. Next week, we will be moving from marketing and merchandising to get into digital retail to converting BDC from appointment centers to actual remote sellers with another incredibly special guest, uh, Mr. David Kane. So we've got an awesome lineup. Uh, hopefully, everybody on here got a ton of uh, value out of this. It will be posted online at the link. We'll be sending it all out. But once again, Brian, thank you so much for being here, man. That means the world to us. You did awesome. Great. And I'll just awesome. put in my email address. If anybody has any specific questions, there it is. Boom. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your time. And Brianna, Joe, come on. Excellent experience today.